Turkish forces have been passing through hard times in northwestern Syria. First, a mysterious heart attack that killed a Turkish general in Idlib. Then, Turkish military positions in the province of Aleppo were devastated by a series of rocket strikes. Rockets pounded the so-called observation post of the Turkish military near the town of Zizwe on September 12th. Later on the same day, when Turkish reinforcements deployed in the area, the Zizwe post was once again shelled by unguided rockets. Photos and videos from the ground showed that the strike caused notable damage, while pro-militant sources also claimed that several Turkish troops were injured. The Turkish armed forces responded to the attack by striking positions of the Kurdish People's Protection Units, YPG, in Akiba, Sukhanka, and Burj al -Kas. On September 13th, the Afrin Liberation Forces, an armed group affiliated with the YPG, claimed responsibility for the strikes on Turkish positions. This group regularly conducts attacks on the Turkish army and Turkish proxies in the region of Afrin. It did not reveal details of the operation, but pro-Turkish sources claim that Kurdish rebels may have carried out their attacks in the area of Ka'alat Kolutta near the town of Kabashin. On September 12th, two explosions hit the Turkish-occupied town of Ras al Ayan in northeastern Syria. The first explosion, caused by an improvised explosive device, took place in the Haj Wasfei Alley. The second explosion, a booby-trapped motorcycle, erupted near the central bakery. At least four civilians were killed. Pro-Turkish sources accused the YPG of conducting this attack. However, this time, the main suspect is ISIS. The YPG and its allied groups focused their attacks on mostly military targets. On top of this, the Syrian army and its allies carried out a series of rocket and artillery strikes on the positions of Turkish-backed terrorists, mostly members of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, in the southern part of Greater Idlib on September 13th and 14th. According to pro-militant sources, government forces launched over 400 rockets and shells on terrorist positions near Fatara, Kafarawid, Sufuhan, Kansafra, Albara, Shanan, Flifel, and Benin. Pro-government sources claim that a few dozen terrorists were eliminated or injured in the strikes. Just a few days earlier, warplanes of the Russian Aerospace Forces bombed fortified positions and training camps of terrorists near Jashir al-Shagir and Sheikh Yusuf. Airstrikes by unidentified combat drones, most likely Iranian ones, also pounded a fortified point of Hayat Tur al-Sham near Albara. Media outlets affiliated with terrorists or Turkey did not provide details regarding the real impact of the strike, claiming that they targeted civilian targets only. Pro-Russian sources speculated that up to 100 Turkish-backed terrorists were eliminated. Nonetheless, this number is questionable. Turkey is not hurrying up to fulfill its commitments under the Idlib de-escalation deal and neutralize al-Qaeda-linked terrorists in its area of responsibility. Instead, Ankara continues military and financial support to these groups, hoping to turn the al-Qaeda-linked held part of northwestern Syria into a pseudo-state under a Turkish protectorate, or even annex this territory. So, it seems that the Syrian-Iranian-Russian alliance has opted to take the initiative into its own hands and make real steps to deal with the terrorist threat in Idlib.